D-Class personnel are the cogs that keep the machinery of the SCP Foundation running smoothly. Unfortunately, things are rarely very smooth for the personnel themselves. There's a reason that common knowledge basically states that D stands for disposable. The Lab Rats of the SCP Foundation D-Class is a role that no one in their right mind wants to play. But what if you didn't have a choice? What if somehow, whether through a shift in time and space, or being accused of a crime you didn't commit, you found yourself transported to a cell at an SCP Foundation site? Once there, you quickly realize how dire your situation is. But there's hope. Maybe. You overhear your fellow inmates whispering about other prisoners who managed to escape. Could you use your knowledge of the SCP Foundation to find your way back to freedom? We pose this scenario and question to the amazing fans of SCP Explained, and you told us about all the ways you would try to escape from the SCP Foundation before your inevitable termination, or worse, transmutation. So let's get right to it and see who would make it out and who would wind up in SCP-682's stomach. Just Drake said, well, considering I've quite enjoyed the VR game SCP Lab Rat, I'd wait for a good containment breach, maybe release a few extra SCPs that may be contained with me, trust no voice I hear looking at you SCP-939, and just make for some type of hole created, or maybe sewage drain. I've never beaten the game, truthfully, but it'd be an adventure. Video games are the best way to prepare for real life, everyone knows that. That's why Resident Evil made me great at killing monsters. Animal Crossing made me a world-class fisherman, and The Sims prepared me for those days where the door to my room is suddenly replaced with a painting of a clown. Really though, that sounds like a solid strategy. Use the chaos of a containment breach as a cover, play Robin Hood to some friendly SCPs, don't follow any voices, and see if you can Shawshank Redemption your way to freedom. What have you got to lose? Well, maybe your life, but you probably wouldn't hold on to that for long at the Foundation anyway. Unwind said, Easy peasy. Having a leg up is an understatement in this situation. Having watched SCP Explain videos, we have a great understanding about the Foundation and the SCPs, even more so than the site director themselves. Just claimed to be an O5 Council member from a parallel universe, and when interrogated dropped some classified information only they would know. You'd be such a valuable resource they might even let you join their council. Not only have you escaped D-Class duties, you've also gained high amounts of power. Easy peasy indeed. Just make an incredibly bold claim and expose yourself as a potential security risk. There's a slim chance this might work, but there's also a pretty substantial chance that the real O5 Council will intervene and decide to go ahead and terminate you, just in case. At the very least, you'd likely be placed in permanent protective custody. But hey, maybe they'll put you in one of the comfy cells with a minibar and everything. Gaming Revelation said, If I was escaping, I would use an audio clip of 682 screaming and or destroying things and play it when people or SCPs are nearby. The sounds of 682 will scare people away or make a good enough distraction for any guards stupid enough to fight 682. I would also email the audio file to myself, that way I can use the audio file on basically any device. This is an interesting one. You'd need a lot of factors to line up just right for this one to work. From keeping your phone or another device on your person in spite of being in Foundation custody, to finding a Wi-Fi signal to access your email, to making sure that your audio file plays loudly enough to be convincing. Not sure what they have planned for the next update, but currently the iPhone doesn't emit sounds at a volume loud enough to break through walls. There is a chance that the sound would strike enough fear into the hearts of experienced guards to throw them off for a while anyway. Just make sure SCP-682 doesn't find out what you're up to. It probably doesn't appreciate copycats. Ender Titan Games said, I have a pretty simple but solid escape plan, I think. Step 1. Find out what site I'm at. What kind of SCPs are contained there? Are they dangerous or harmless? How often are there containment breaches? How often do D-Class die? If the site seems safe enough, then I'll just spend my days meeting harmless SCPs like 999. Step 2. If the site is dangerous, then I need to do everything in my power to make sure I'm not cross-tested with a dangerous SCP. If that means stabbing my eye out or cutting off my leg, I'll do it. I'll do anything short of killing myself if it keeps me away from the likes of 106 and 682. Step 3. Try and see if any of the SCPs could help me escape. For instance, if 738 is at the site, then I'll find a way to get cross-tested with it, and then ask to be free from the Foundation and have all my criminal records wiped. 
Sure, it'll cost me, but hey, at least I'll be free. Or I could find a Keter class SCP and see if we could help each other break out. It's a risky option, but once again, I do everything in my power to stay away from the lizard. Step 4. If all else fails, then I'm either going to have to wait for or cause a massive containment breach. Then I can escape in the confusion. All that time playing SCP Secret Lab will come in handy. Once again, it's a risky option and I don't really like my odds, but I'll take my chances if I have to. Step 5. If I die, and let's be honest, I most likely will, then I only have two requests for the Foundation. One, that they actually decide which SCP-001 is the real SCP-001, and two, that my tombstone read, subscribe to SCP Explained because they make fun and entertaining videos. Also, screw the lizard. First of all, this isn't a simple plan by any means. It's not a Canadian rock band formed in 1999, and it's actually got quite a lot of detail. You've thought long and hard about this, and we appreciate that. One note though, making a deal with SCP-738 might not just cost you. A previous D-Class was offered freedom by the entity at the cost of his best friend's death. Even after he took that deal with the devil, he was recaptured by the Foundation a mere five hours later. You can decide for yourself if that's really worth it. But hey, if you're that desperate, then go right ahead. At least you've prepared for the very worst. The first of your posthumous requests will likely be denied, if we're being honest. And the second request is very sweet of you. Look, I'm blushing. But also, we'd prefer if you didn't put a Foundation target on our backs by pointing out how many of their secrets were revealing. You're right about one thing, though. Can't stand that lizard. Juan Torres said, We're going to need a teddy bear, an aluminum-coated box, a chair and a desk, an intact human nervous system, a dart gun, and lawn mulch. Wait, wait, don't stop there. You're just gonna give us a list of ingredients and not finish the recipe? I already went out and bought all that stuff, and the nervous system won't stay fresh forever. Super Hamster said, Plug 079 into the Wi-Fi. It could cause a breach big enough, so hide during the breach and then escape the ruined facility. Let me explain further. 682 and 079 bonded, and 682 is famous for containment breaches. 682 is very hard to recontain. So if you help 079, he'll help 682, which will help you. Also, many other dangerous SCPs will be breached. Now this is thinking big. Sure, you'll be exposing the entirety of the World Wide Web to an aggressive, unpredictable, and downright rude artificial intelligence, but you'll probably be able to escape back into the world. Who knows how much of the world will actually be left after you've unleashed 079, 682, and a whole host of other dangerous anomalies, but the remaining rubble will be your oyster. Creature Savage said, Assuming I'm at a site with an intelligent SCP that's known for escapes, such as 682, I'd offer it a chance at freedom if it helped me escape, and we'd both take off for the infinite Ikea. Of course, I could also offer Ferdinand the Cannibal my services as a jester for his protection all the way to and through the infinite Ikea. Ferdinand the Cannibal, now you're talking. If you manage to team up with that gargantuan gentleman, he could definitely be a big help. Just make sure he stays well fed, or your new friend is going to start wondering how you taste with fava beans and a nice Chianti. Otherwise, though, he'd love to have someone listen to his stories and take the high part during his favorite songs. Once you're free, though, why not shoot for the stars? No need to fend off the murderous staff of the infinite Ikea. Just go to a regular Ikea and get a new couch and some meatballs. No monsters necessary. Delay Animation said, Before escaping, there are multiple problems to overcome. You have to know the layout, guards, patrol paths, camera placement, which key cards you need, which opportunities are best to escape. And once you manage to find all of that out and escape the outside, you're still not done. Depending on if you were in a site or area, the bare wilderness surrounding a site would be enough to wreak havoc on you. Not to mention the watchtowers and outside patrols. If you were in an area, the Foundation would most likely have agents in the town surrounding the area. In conclusion, it is not possible to escape the Foundation's grasp. The only way to not wind up as a Class D is to not do anything to become a Class D. You know what they say, the best defense is a good offense. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. However, there's not much offense or prevention you can do when a temporal anomaly thrusts you into a parallel universe and plops you down right in the middle of a D-class cell. So even if you keep your hands clean your entire life, you might just find yourself in the custody of the SCP Foundation anyway. 
It's a nice idea to think that just making all the right choices will prevent you from being falsely imprisoned by a secret organization, but sadly life and wormholes just don't work like that. Zagham Shabazz Karim said, The best thing to do is to make allies. First of all, you need to get as many D-Class personnel on your side as possible. Ask them what duties they are on and use your information to help them. Also, use them to find out what your duties are going to be as they will have connections. You need to stay on the down low, as if you're found out you'll be experimented on or worse. But you don't only want to make allies with the D-Class. Armed with the knowledge from SCP Explained, you are able to guess or approximate which facility you're at, what SCPs might be there, and who the staff are. With that knowledge, you can approach some of the kinder staff and build your relationship. So in case you get caught when escaping, you have a fallback or someone that can bail you out of deadly punishments. You also want to be resourceful and map out the place to identify escape routes and the armory or weapons storage facility. Next, you want to form better relationships with some of the SCPs. Before terminations roll around, you want to arrange a day that the D-Class personnel help some SCPs out of containment. Most non-deadly ones, as you don't want to make an enemy out of the SCP Foundation, but enough to distract the guarding personnel. Also, with your close contact with facility members, you have a better chance at stealing credentials or passes to allow yourself through doors and escape. But that isn't all. There actually might be some SCPs on site that will make escaping easier, and your goal should not just be your own escape, but escaping with as many D-Class personnel as possible. You want to equip them with passes. All of them should know only one specific escape route, which they themselves or a few others are going, so that even if they are caught, the others will not be found out. And you want a few of them to escape before everyone else and cause a ruckus outside, making it look like the whole group has escaped, sending guards behind them. They'll need access to a vehicle, so that needs to be secured from one of the staff, which could be captured during the escape and used for a way out, or you could steal their keys earlier, depending on the situation. You, yourself, and a few others head to the armory to secure weapons, not only to escape but to protect yourself from SCPs in the future. Then you need to secure vehicles for the group, which you will need to put distance between the facility and your group and stay away from other nearby facilities. You'll need to stop at a certain point and go to the nearest hospital to check for body implants or anything that can be used to track you, changing clothes and continuing on by foot. At this point, your group can choose to separate, live collectively, and stay alert of the Foundation or join another organization. This is probably the longest response we received. We just had to include it to applaud the dedication and thought at play here, as well as the selflessness. You're not just planning for your own rescue. No, that's too small time for Zaghem. You're planning to liberate every D-Class you can and potentially start your own brand new society together. Make sure you have a nice talk with them about the rules for your new community, such as absolutely no stabbing your neighbors, and enjoy all the great trauma-free barbecues that follow. Plot Armor said, I would either attempt to cause a containment breach or steal an anomaly like SCP-268. Still, first I would draw thaumaturgic symbols all over my body and clothes, like Kalfistan Isle, which will make me resistant to physical damage that will help me survive a containment breach. Bringing thaumaturgy into the equation is a brilliant move. You'd likely be the only D-Class on site with any knowledge of that work or the symbols. You'll have to act fast, though, and work your magic before the Foundation figures out what you're up to. If you don't, they'll likely wipe your memory with amnestics or just terminate you on the spot. The trickiest part of this plan is probably finding something to write with. You can't exactly ask to borrow a pen, but between those and the hat, you could probably slip out unnoticed and unscathed. Jacob Audi said, I just do my best to find Mr. Peanut so I could die relatively quickly or painlessly. Why would that kill you? Are you allergic? Just kidding, we know you're talking about SCP-173. As bleak of an answer as this is, we have to commend your honesty and self-awareness it takes to look at the dangers of trying to escape the SCP Foundation and simply saying, no, I'd rather not. Just another person on the internet said, well, taken with someone who has a very short attention span and who is a procrastinator with ADHD, I could request a test with Miss J to see how it would affect someone like me. Then I could escape and live the rest of my life in peace and solidarity. Miss J did help a previous D-Class leave the Foundation behind and start a new life, so why not you too? We're sure you'll be a model pupil. 
and wish you luck in whatever discipline you decide to pursue. Don't forget your number two pencil. Milo Knight said, SCP-6113 is a pretty surefire way to get out. Assuming you meet the criteria, you can suddenly have a different name and appearance, and you won't really be on any Foundation records. Use that to plead your case. Just pray you don't get terminated. This would be a pretty drastic choice, and you'd probably have to double down on the whole new life thing since none of your loved ones will recognize you. Or you can just tell them you got extreme reconstructive surgery, I guess. But it's better to be alive in a new body than dead in your usual one. As long as you're able to avoid detection following your transformation and make sure they don't catch you on the security tapes, this might just work. Zadanor0203 said, I mean, you can't. Yes, you'll survive until the monthly termination, but with how fortified these sites are, unless you can get lucky with a containment breach or are able to gain access to the sewer system, you're not escaping, and that's not even taking into account your spontaneous being here, and having great knowledge on the Foundation that you'd only really know if you were a being above their perception. So on top of that, there's also the potential of you being terminated for knowing too much, or being contained as a new SCP. Hey now, we didn't say reply with the best way to bum us out. Really though, we see all of your hyper-realistic commenters, and we get it, really. But in a world filled with killer statues and friendly slime monsters, anything is possible. Sure, most of the D-Class that wind up behind Foundation walls wind up dead, but you could be the one in a million who makes it out. Dare to dream. Matt's Magic said, Easy, I simply say, whoever shoots me or harms me is a rotten egg, and then walk out unharmed due to the fact the guards are in fact people, not eggs. That's it! You've cracked the code. Unless the SCP Foundation starts hiring eggs as guards or creates some sort of unholy human-egg hybrid to staff their halls, we're looking at you. Humans refuted. Their days of keeping D-Class prisoners are over. Thank you for participating in yet another weird, wild community response video from SCP Explained. What's your favorite escape attempt? Anything we missed? Let us know down in the comments. And if you want the chance to be featured in the next one, keep an eye on our community tab for the next question. And in the meantime, get back in your cells. Now go check out your questions for God answered and how to actually beat SCP-3008 The Infinite Ikea for more questions and answers from the SCP Explained community.